Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, we're going to start a new project, and we're doing a western holster for the Heritage Barkeep. It's a short barreled 22 revolver. And we're doing a western style holster for it that'll go on a carry belt. So come on in and let's get started. Alright, so I took the Heritage Barkeep, which is a short barreled western style 22 revolver, and I made a pattern. You can go back to some of my former videos. They'll show you how to make these patterns. And I had a customer ask me to make one of these. And I made it pretty quickly in a couple of days. So I thought it would make a good video. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one because I have the barkeep also so I want one for myself because it turned out so nice so I'm gonna take my pattern got a piece of probably 10 ounce leather here I'm gonna go ahead and lay my pattern out and trace my pattern onto my leather And I normally use just these real inexpensive ballpoint pens that are normally like giveaways. Um, companies put their names on them and give them away at shows and different things, events, and they seem to work really well for me. Um, some people like to use a stylus some people use a pencil but I prefer to do this and the the ink pen it the line is going to come off when I do the beveling anyway so it transfers really well to the leather and I can see the line really well So when I do my cutting, take my razor knife and I just follow that line and I try to get the point at an angle to where I can make the turns and what that does is it keeps a sharp edge on the leather and it also allows me to make those turns with the point of that knife so you notice I keep turning my leather I'm always cutting away from my second hand And the key to this is to make sure that you have a good, sharp blade. Now, if you get into a real tight radius, like right here on this part, I can go ahead and cut that piece off. Come back to where I started and cut that excess off, that scrap, 
and get that out of my way. And then I can come back to where I started on the other side and continue. Again, I go very slow. Keeping my off hand out of the way as I'm holding down my workpiece. Keep turning it so that you notice my cutting hand doesn't have to move. So I don't have to reposition my cutting hand, I reposition my work. Keep following that line get into this tight spot right here. I'm going to stop, come back and start again on a broader line curve. Keep moving and turning that piece until I end up back where I stopped on the other side. And I can remove that scrap and get it out of the way. Now any of these tight corners that I had, I can go back with my knife and I can clean those up. Whether it's an inside corner or an outside corner, I can clean those up with a good sharp knife. And just take your time, work yourself around that corner. And the, the sharper the corner, the more time it may take you to clean that up. But again, you're, you're working with that point, not the broad part of the blade down here, but you're working with this point up here. So I'll just work my way around that outside corner and clean that up. Now that may take me several cuts and when you come around to this side and you'll see the same thing. And I'll work my way around that edge and clean that up. And if you do a radius like that, it's going to take several cuts. You take small pieces and just work your way around that radius. up with several small pieces of scrap. You just move out of your way. Anything you see that you need to clean up, 
go back and clean those pieces up and then you end up with your piece of leather for your holster. So we can move that out of the way, all that scrap, and then we can take our beveler Start beveling around the corners and the same thing as cutting when you get to those sharp turns you may take several attempts to get that radius beveled to where you don't have a sharp edge in those corners. So you just keep working your way around. Notice I, same as when I'm cutting, I'm turning my piece so I keep my beveling tool basically in the same spot. And you can see as I turn my beveling tool along the edge and I continue to bevel that sharp edge on that leather, that ink mark that was on there disappears. I can scoot that out of my way and continue on around. Now I've had on some holsters before, I had a couple of comments of why do you bevel both sides? when the two square sides or unbeveled sides are going to meet anyway and I just like the finish that it gives it you, you wouldn't have to you could you could match up those two square sides if you'd like like this not bevel the back side and those are going to meet and stitch right here anyway but I like to do it because when I burnish the edge it makes a nice finish what I prefer as the finished edge so I will come back and bevel the back side and again you don't have to if you don't want to if those sides are going to meet But I just continue around on the raw side of the leather. And continue to bevel. And that gives me a nice round edge that I can come back and burnish. And in my opinion, and my opinion only, I like the finish that it gives it once you do the burnishing. So I've done my beveling on both sides, fold it over, make sure they match up good. I don't need to do any excess trimming or anything, and it looks good. And then this is going to be the belt loop, so it's going to fold over this way. So now that I've got the beveling done, I can take 
my sponge and I've just got tap water here and I'm just going to lightly moisten that edge that I just beveled and I don't want to get it real wet I just want to moisten that just get it damp and what that will do is when I go to do my burnishing that will allow that edge to buff up and get hard and shiny it gives it a real nice finish So I'll let that sit for a second, get my burnishing tool, put away my beveler. Take my burnishing tool and I'm going to lightly burnish that. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. But I am putting some friction on there, and that slicks that edge, makes that hard, rolls it over nicely, and gives it a nice finished look. And again, it's not how hard you press on it as much as the speed and the friction that you're putting on it that makes it a nice finished edge. If you if it's too wet and you press too hard, it's going to flatten it out. Doesn't give it a nice round, shiny edge. It just kind of flattens that out. You get into those tight spots, you can take it. Just twist your burnishing tool. and it'll do the same thing. So you're not pressing hard as much as you're using light pressure and speed. So continue on around. You notice that I grab the leather where I can kind of keep it stable as I do my burnishing. And work my way around the edge. And it starts giving it a real nice shine, hardens that edge, and makes it nice and round. And then double check it. See if you need to hit any spots maybe that you missed. And you can see, gives it a nice, rounded, shiny edge and hardens that up. So that makes a nice finish when you stitch that together. And again, where you stitch it, if you want to leave that squared off on the inside, and not do any beveling 
that's up to you whether you'd like to do that or not. I like to do both sides and I think it gives it a better finished look. So that's how I use my patterns to cut out my leather and do my beveling and my burnishing. And again, that is for the Heritage Barkeep. Come back for the next episode and we'll be moving on to the next step. So there's the first step in this project of making a western style holster for the Heritage Barkeep 22 revolver. Come back next episode, we'll be moving on to the next steps of this project. And like I always say, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.